So a very good morning boys and girls, welcome back to another video and after what was quite possibly the worst night's sleep I have ever had in my little hotel room at the side of the road, welcome back to Scotland. Now, I was here around six weeks ago and one area in particular made a very big impression but it was an area that I didn't really have much time to explore. So welcome to Glencoe. So here we are, this is the first photo location on today's adventure. This is the Teve Moor. This is probably the most photographed mountain in Scotland. And well, I'm coming to do exactly that. We're going to take a photograph of it. There's a nice waterfall down we can use as a foreground interest. There's a tree just off behind me, which I think is going to balance the waterfall off quite nicely. Let's get in there and take the first photograph of the day. So please excuse the fact my camera is all the way over there and I am all the way over here but there was no way I was risking bringing two cameras and two tripods to the middle of this waterfall. My hands are that cold I can't screw the filter holder kit on. There we go. Right, we're on. So, let's throw some filters on. So, I'm using the Olympus EM1 Mark II with my lower 6mm lens. And it's the widest lens that I have. It's going to allow me to get this waterfall in, the mountain, and a really big tree right in front of me. So just let me put some filters on, starting with the polarizing filter. This is just going to take a little bit of glare off the wet rocks. It's also going to give a little bit of a pop to the sky as well. So let's rotate this. We're taking the sheen off now. And now I think we'll throw a six stop filter on. It's not quite dark, it's not quite light. It's kind of that middle light at the minute. So let's throw a six stop in there just to slow the shutter speed down a little tiny bit. Let's have a look. Hopefully I'm not gonna fall in right now. Here we go. So we're currently three stops underexposed. 2.1.3, there we go. Just check for focus. This is a manual focus lens, of course. Just going to rotate the camera around a little bit. Oh, and the mountain is just catching the early morning light as well. Two second timer. Here we go. So I think that photograph worked out all right in the end. I think the way the sun rose and lit up the side of a teeth more, I think it really helped make the photograph. But it's not the first photograph I've taken from this spot because 14 hours ago when I arrived, it was very cloudy and very drizzly. And I kind of thought I'd chance my arm and come here with a camera and just take a photograph of the waterfall. You can see the mountain's not quite there. There is some mountain there, but you kind of get the gist of the day that was presented to me when I arrived here, which is why I'm quite excited by the conditions this morning. The only problem I can perceive now is we're going to move on to some more grand landscapey photo stuff, and the skies are a little bit blue, which doesn't really lend itself well to landscape photography, does it? I'm hoping it clouds over in the next hour or two, just a little bit. Some light would be nice, but a little bit more cloud in the sky would be epic, so... Let's move off, let's go take a photograph of the three sisters of Glencoe and hope for some sunlight. Let's go. Well, you may know me by my age But it's something I'm trying to change But it's hard to wake up without that caffeine in your cup So welcome to the second location on my adventure on Glencoe I think it's called Lagnabark Hut I apologise if I've completely mispronounced that It's a little white cottage nestled up the side of a very big mountain 
It looks incredible at the minute. There's some white cloud just blowing across the top of it. We've got this low golden hour light just illuminating the valley. It's just adding some contrast, some lights and some shadows. This entire scene. And I found this little mound to take the first photograph from, but now I'd like to get down and get a little bit closer, maybe get a wider angle lens on. I believe there may be a little stream down there that we can use to do some long exposure photography. So let's get down there and see what we can do. So just walking down this little track now, there is like a little bridge thing just off to the right hand side, sorry, the left hand side of this hut, I thought that might make for a fun foreground, so I'm gonna see if we can get down there and see if we can't use something with that, add the two subjects in, the, the bridge, the hut, and then add the mountains as a backdrop, so let's get down there and just see what we can do with it. The sun's getting a bit stronger now, so I don't think all this contrast and saturation is gonna last for too much longer. Let's get a hurry on, hopefully take the third photograph on today's little expedition. So with this one, it seems like the further round towards the bridge you get, the more it narrows in the gap between the bridge and the cottage. I didn't want big gaps between the two of them, so walking around a little bit and just narrowing off the angle, it just brings them together and it just creates a sort of slightly tighter looking composition. So we've got the bridge kind of in the middle of the photograph with the cottage down on the bottom right rule of thirds point, And then we've just got the big mountain just enveloping the background with some nice low cloud now rolling across it. My fear earlier on that there's going to be a lot of blue sky today. Fortunately, some of this cloud is sort of bubbling up a little bit. It's not complete blankets of cloud, which is what I didn't want. We're just getting some nice low cloud just hanging about. We've also got some nice golden hour light still. I don't think it's going to last for too much longer, but it does cast some nice light and some shadow and some contrast and some saturation across the whole landscape. So here we go. Let's take a photograph of Lagnigbach. Cot, hot cottage, house, white thing, and a bridge. So this is the composition on the back of my camera, uh, F8, ISO 100, a 100th of a second, which I might just change that a little bit. Let's just speed that up a little bit. Let's go 125th just to stop some of the highlight clipping in the clouds in the backdrop. We've got the mountains, a big subject here. We've got a little bit of golden grass down here. We've got the bridge in the center and the cottage just off on the lower rule of third point. Two second timer, here's that photograph. <laughs> So it just wouldn't be right if I didn't find some water to go wading through. So we've got this stream that's sort of converging into a little rapid in the middle of the foreground of this photograph. We've got the cottage just off to the bottom left hand rule of third point. We've got the big mountain, but there's all sorts of clouds flowing across the top of it. And I thought it wouldn't be fun to do a long exposure. We just see some of the streaking in the clouds in the sky. So I've thrown a polarizing filter on and a 10 stop filter on. The polarizing filter is just taking some of the glare and the sheen off of all the water and the rocks around here. There's a lot of bright sunlight approaching now and it's just really making everything quite shiny. So we thought we'd cut through that with the polarizing filter. And obviously the 10 stop filter is giving us that long exposure look. So we're at 30 seconds, F10, ISO 100. Using a two second timer, here's this photograph. So I've switched to the Olympus for this photograph because as you can see, this is a super wide angle. So I've thrown the six millimeter Lowell lens on, full frame equivalent of a 12 millimeter lens. And I'll sort of take a big panoramic vista photo of the mountain, the cottage and the other mountain and the whole glen in one photograph. So this photograph is going to look exactly like this video without me in it. And it's going to be taken on the Olympus EM1 Mark II. Here it is. So it's time to go hiking. Behind me, these mountains here are called the Three Sisters of Glencoe. And just up the track behind me, around half a mile away, there's apparently a viewpoint, which is a really good spot to take a photograph of them from. So that's the plan. So we're gonna go hiking half a mile up the side of Glencoe and hope to take a really nice photo of these three mountains here. So let's get stuck in and go hiking. <laughs> Too young to feel this old Now getting any wiser Still not doing what I'm told 
If this year just like the last one, it's getting harder. So I've made it to the end of the hike to get to the Three Sisters of Glencoe, but I kind of feel like this photograph, it needs to be higher just to get a little bit more, more of the vista in the valley down below. Where I'm standing right now, you can see it all, but it just needs a little bit more height. And there's a rocky outcropping just behind where you are. I'm going to attempt to get to the top of. There's a little hut there, and it seems like there's a ledge where you could probably just get maybe another, I reckon, 50 meters of altitude. And it may make all the difference to this photograph. So let's climb up a little bit further hopefully get a really nice photo of the three sisters now the sun's gone behind some clouds it's just off to my right hand side it looks as if the cloud may blow away so we may get some more light shining on the landscape i was hoping to get some light on the three sisters themselves so let's hang around and just see what can happen but the wind's picked up and it feels like there might be some weather sort of approaching so let's just see what happens over the next half an hour or so locked that's a shame jim memories die hard third of march 1973 wonder who jim was right so we made it to the top of the ledge and yeah i think a few extra meters of altitude will make all the difference to this photograph and there's a little bit of sunlight come through as well even though the sun is still pretty much obscured by the sun there's a little bit bleeding through so that's always a good thing for a photo so let's get the camera set up and take one final photograph from Glencoe. This spectacular view down the valley. So I've put the camera on the tripod and I've put my 70 to 28 millimeter lens on. And I've decided that the only way to do this photograph really from here is to take a panorama. It's the only way you're going to get the grandeur of this landscape in, in all its beauty and glory. So let's go ahead, let's take a panoramic photograph. So I've leveled the tripod ball head so it's perfectly flat. So I'm going to start off around this side. The sun's just come out in time to play ball. So I'm going to start on the left-hand side of the mountain. I'm going to swizzle the camera around, but I'm going to leave a 30% overlap on every time I do this. I'm going to keep spinning around. I get the feeling this is going to be a very large panorama. Here we go. I'm now slightly concerned about my own shadow, so we may have to do something about that. But that's what clone stamp tools there for. Let's spin around. I'm not in it yet. Uh, I am a little bit. Oh, I might have just got my arm out of it then. And yeah, the final one's going to have me in. But if I stay fairly still, I should be able to clone myself out of that in Photoshop. Just by using some of the surrounding textures with the grass. So here is a panoramic photograph of Glencore the three sisters and a view down the valley. So thank you very much for watching my adventures around Glencoe. It's been an absolute pleasure to come here and photograph this at last. Like I said earlier on in the video, I came here around a month ago, just drove through the valley and it left a very, very big impression. It's somewhere I just desperately wanted to come back to. I've got a couple of days free. So here we are. So thank you for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please do give it a like and a thumbs up. It really does help the video and it brings new viewers to see my content. And if you liked it more than that, there is a subscribe button below me. You can press that and see more content from myself every single week. So until the next time out, I'm going to love you and leave you and say peace and goodbye. And now it's time to drive home for seven hours. I can't wait.